you come and touch every life. Father, as we open our hearts and our minds to your word, Father, do a work that only you can do. And Father, I pray that you would just use my, my life, use my heart, my mind, and my lips, Lord. And I pray that you would anoint me and use me for your honor and glory. And Father, I thank you tonight for everything you do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 You may be seated tonight. Praise God. How many, how many here tonight can say, I'm, I'm expecting a powerful revival from the hand of God? I, I am. I'm expecting it. I'm expecting to see some mighty, powerful things. God is so good. And, and I believe it. I believe that he's getting ready to pour out a fresh outpouring of his spirit. I believe he's getting ready to pour out a fresh fire. What a, what a powerful God. Amen. How many remember when, when you got touched by that fire? And, and, and nobody can stop you from saying anything about the Lord. And now... It, it seems like uh, they got to pry it open. you got to pry your lips open and try to get the words out. But I want you to go with me tonight in, your, in the Word of God because let me tell you something. God's getting ready to bring a revival to America. It's going to be so powerful. And uh, I believe that those that really want it are going to have it. How many here want it? Yes. I know I want it. Yes. And, you know, the, the problem is, let me say this to you, the problem is, is not that God can't give us what he wants to give us. The, the word of God says that in the last days he will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. But, but let me say this to you, the problem is not that God is not going to give us fire or he's not going to give us revival. Give me a from up there. The, the problem is that most people don't want to do what it takes to get the fire. Are you with me tonight? And, and, and I want I want if you're writing anything down, I want you to write this down. Because this, these two ingredients are so important for revival. If you and I are going to have revival in this hour, and, and not just us, but anybody else in this nation, if we're going to see a move of God like never before, this, these two ingredients are very needful for us in our life. And one of them is holiness. We, we need to walk separated lives we, we need to walk separated lives are you with me church and, and the next the next ingredients that you and I need you and I need a hunger for the presence of God a, 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 a hunger such a hunger in us that, that all you want to do is seek the Lord that all you want to do is get in there in the, in, in the very presence of God. Are you with me tonight? Because let me say something to you. God is the only one that can do the impossible. There's no other. There's no other. There's, this, is not a, this is not about magic or, 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 or anything like that. No, no waving a wand over somebody. Or, that, that is, that's not the way it works. It, it's got to be... It's got to be the very, very power of God moving and working and doing what it has to do. Only God can change lives and only God can perform miracles. Are you with me tonight? If you believe that, give Him praise. Alright? I want you to go with me because we're going to see, we're going to go to the Old Testament first. Because the Old Testament is a shadow. The Bible says it's a shadow of, of, the, of the things that were to come. 
In other words, it, gave, it was given as a picture of what was coming in our day. All right? So I want you to go with me to the book of Exodus, the 40th chapter. Amen. And we're going to read there from verse 36 to verse 38. And we're, and we're going somewhere with this tonight, so I pray, I pray that you will hang in there with me because uh, there are certain things that hinder us, uh, that will hinder you or hinder us from having what God has for us. And we need to pay very close attention to what the Lord is saying. Praise God. So this is, this is what he says in Exodus chapter 40, verse 36 to 38. And I, and I like what he says here because you see, he, he, has always, he has always operated with fire or, or with his power. He, he has never operated separate from, there's always been, a, his power has always been present and so has his mighty presence. Is there anyone with me tonight? The presence of God and the power of God have always been, been at work, have always been there, permanent in the, in the church, in the temple, with God's people. I mean, it, 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 it's powerful. Amen. Are you with me, church? There, there are places tonight, listen to me, that if you, if you know anything about history, about revivals, if you know anything about it, you'll know that, that, that revivals actually... Many of the revivals that we experienced here in America in the 1800s, 1700s, and even in the 1600s, many of those revivals came to us, amen, from England. I mean, evangelists and preachers from England came over here to preach to us, to give us the gospel. Smith Wigglesworth and different others from, from Europe came here to preach to us. Now, but let me tell you something. Let me, let me say this to you. If you go to Europe today, in this time, the churches that, that, that were on fire back then, today they're museums. Today you go over there to look at the art that, that was on the walls and, and the, the carvings on the roof and, 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 and so, so forth like that. But, but, but there's no fire there. There's no, no presence of God there no more. Is there anybody home? And the devil has always worked to shut the fire out. That, that's his game. He wants, to, he wants to shut the fire of God out. And, and you and I have got to hunger. Listen, if, if, you, if you lost your hunger for the presence and the fire of God, you know, you know one of the things that, that, that will take your hunger from you is if, if you get so occupied, so involved with the world, with the things of the world, that after a while, you're, those are the things that interest you so much that after a while, the presence of God just starts leaving. Is there anybody home? All right? So you, you got to understand that tonight. So look what he says here. In all their journeys, he's talking about the, the children of Israel, and he says, in all their journeys... Whenever the cloud was taken up over the tabernacle, now we know the cloud represented the very presence of God, the Shekinah glory of God. Are you with me? And he says, whenever, in all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the Israelites went onward. They, they followed, now listen to me, they followed the presence of God. They followed the Shekinah glory of God. They went after it. If, 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 they, if they didn't go, when the, when, the, when the cloud would move, when the cloud was moving, if they didn't move with it, they would miss it. They'd be on their own. Anybody home? There's a lot of, lot of ministries today, I'm telling you something, that are on their own right now. Anybody home? I said, is there anybody home here tonight? Don't just look at me with your eyes big like this. Look at me and say, I, okay, let me know you're out there. All right? You, you got to understand that, that, that you and I have got to, we, we've, got to, we've got to be under the presence of God. We've got to be under the covering of the mighty cloud of God. You and I can't walk away from that. All right? Look at, look at the next verse. But if the cloud was ta not taken up, but if the cloud stayed, they did not journey. They didn't move. 
until the day that it was taken up. In other words, they were in control. The, the, the God was in control. Say, God was in control. It, it was God they were following. Say, say it with me. It was the Lord that were following. It wasn't a religion. It wasn't a, a symbol. It, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't just going to church and, and hearing a message and going home and going right back to our old life and, and all of that. Or no, listen to me. It was a lifestyle. It, it, this is what they lived. They, they, they followed that cloud. If, if they didn't follow that cloud, listen to me, they were, they were cut off. All right? So look at this. But if the cloud was not taken up, they did not journey until the day that it was taken up. Once they saw the cloud lifting up from the tent, from the tabernacle, once they saw it lifting up and moving, they knew it was time to move. And they moved with it. Are you with me? I said, are you with me? All right, let's go on. I, I love this. It says, for throughout all their journeys, the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle. In other words, the presence of God, the Shekinah glory of God, was there present in the tabernacle. And it says, it says, for throughout all their journeys, the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire, say it with me, and fire. fire. And fire was in it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel. In the sight of all the house of Israel. The power, say the power, the power. and the presence. The power and the presence of God was there always. It never left. Are you with me, church? They followed it. They went after it. Are you with me, church? Okay? So you, need, you and I need, we need revival. Listen to me. If we're going to have a move of God, if your loved ones or your friends, your neighbors, neighborhoods are going to change. I mean, total neighborhoods are going to change. Listen to me. It's going to be because of that cloud and that fire. Anybody home? Well, give Him praise if you're going to give Him praise. And, and it's, it's, going to, it's, going to, it's going to be so powerful, church. I, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's, we're going to see it. We're going to experience it. We're going to be part of it. Amen. Are you with me? So, so I want you to go with me because, listen, it's, it's so heavy duty. Look at this. Go with me to Exodus chapter 9, verse 23. Remember when they were in Egypt... They were in Egypt, and, and God sent Moses into Egypt to bring them out of bondage. Amen? And, 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 and look what he used. Look what he used. Look what he used to deal with them. All right? Look at this. Then Moses, God told Moses, stretch out your rod and point it towards heaven. So Moses took his rod and he pointed it towards heaven. And he says... Then Moses stretched forth his rod towards the heavens, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and what else? Fire. What else? Fire. And fire. Let, let me say something to you. There's power in fire. How many know there's power in fire? I mean, there ain't nobody, if you're in your right mind, that you're going to sit in a fire. You respect that fire because you know that fire is po more powerful than you are. There's power. Listen to me. There's power in fire. There's power. And I'm talking to you about natural fire. But can you imagine what there is in God's fire? Say God's fire. Because this came from God. This was God's fire come down. It says... And he said, and the Lord sent thunder and hail and fire, lightning ran down to and along the ground. And the Lord, Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. Can you imagine? But they saw fire move through the land. The very power of God moving through the land. It was God moving through the land. 
Are you with me, church? It was the power of God demonstrated right there, amen, to the Egyptian people. It was God demonstrating His power to the Egyptian people. Now, now, now let me say this to you. Once again, amen, some people say history repeats itself. I want to tell you something here tonight. Once again, God wants to demonstrate His power through the church to Egypt. Well, once again, listen, and there's going to be through fire. Is there anybody here tonight? Yeah. Amen. If you believe that, give Him praise. Give the Lord praise. It's going to be through fire. Amen. It's going to be through fire. Now go with me to Exodus chapter 3. And we're going to read from verse 1, amen, to verse 8. I don't want to go too fast because uh, I lose, I'll lose some of you. And some of you are just watching me. And, and you know, some of you used to sit closer. And now you're sitting way back there. What's wrong with you? Man. All right. Exodus chapter 3. From verse 1 down. Now look at this. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back or west side of the wilderness. And came to Horab or Sinai, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of what? In a flame of fire. All right appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. Now, imagine he sees this bush on fire, but it's not consumed. And we're going to read that in a moment. But I want you to write this down. He's actually seen the church today on fire. Say it with me, on fire. And it won't get turned off. That's the picture Moses was seeing. He was seeing the church on fire. And it wouldn't turn off. How many know God wants the church on fire, His fire, and you and I not be turned off? Come on. Come on. That nothing can turn us off. If you're going to give Him praise, give Him praise. Listen to me. God, God doesn't want you going to church all messed up and leaving messed up. He, he wants you to go to church and get delivered so that you can be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Yes, give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Praise His mighty name. So look, look, look what happens here. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burnt with fire, yet was not consumed. It didn't burn. It didn't, it didn't consume itself. All right? It, it just stayed on fire. And how many know you and I have got to be the same way? All right? Let's go on. And Moses said, I will now turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here, I, here am I. And God said, Do not come near. Put your shoes off from your feet. Now, now listen to me. How, how far away can your feet be from the ground? How high can you, the soles of your shoes be from the ground? But in God's eyes, that's too far. Are you with me, church? In other words, in other words He's looking for people who are willing to take off the natural... 
and come into the supernatural. Oh, if you're going to give him praise, give him praise. I'm telling you something tonight because, because listen to me, I have to prepare you for what's coming. It's coming. And, and, and unless you're ready for it, you're not going to know how to deal with it, and you're not going to know how to help others that are coming in. You're, you're going to be so, so messed up yourself. Are you with me tonight? So, so you and I got to check this out tonight. Because, because listen to me. He said, take your shoes off. He says, you, you, you're too high there. You, you, you got platforms on. Got stilettos. Take them off. He says, I want you to take the natural off. Because you're, you're about to enter into the supernatural with the fire of God. Are you with me? And brother, I don't know if you've ever experienced any of that, but let me tell you something. I have. And let me tell you something. The fire of the Holy Ghost is powerful. The anointing of God is so powerful. Amen? So look at this. For the place on which you stand is holy ground. It's separated ground. It's not ordinary ground. You, you cannot, listen to me, you cannot bring the world in there and expect to be consumed with fire. You, 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 you cannot, you listen to me, I'm going to show you something. I'm going, to, I'm going to deal with a few things in a moment, but I want you to bear with me. You, you, you can't go in there with the natural things that you've been dealing with all your life, that you've been hanging on to. You, you, can't, you can't go in there like that. You've got to let it go. Are you with me, church? So you see, the fire, is, the fire will, will, will penetrate every part of your life. Anybody home? Are you with me tonight? Okay, so let's go on. And he said, I am the God... Of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Just go on. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. And have heard their cry. Imagine, this is God. This is God hearing this. And he's looking for someone that he can burn through. Look at this. And have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, the Bible says, that, says that the enemy is a hard taskmaster. The devil is a hard taskmaster. The, the devil is a hard taskmaster. You know who had you all messed up on drugs and going to prison and jails and and, and going through all the stuff you went through. It's the devil. He's a hard taskmaster. Anybody home? And look at this. Because of their taskmasters and oppressors, for I know their sorrows and sufferings and trials. I want you to underline those part right there. I know their sorrows and sufferings and trials because we're going somewhere with this and look at verse 8 and I have come down he said I have come down to deliver them out of the hand and power of the Egyptian and to bring them up out of, the, out of that land to a land good and large, and the land flowing with milk and honey, a land of plenty. And remember, a land of blessing. Say, a land of blessing. <laughs> to the place of the Canaanite, the Hittite, and the Amorite, the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. He says, I've, I've come down, he says, to deliver them. I've come down to deliver them. 
Remember that. I want you to underline that part, that part right there. I have come down to deliver them out of the hand and power of the Egyptian. Are you with me tonight? Now, I want, you to, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, God has his eye on you. He's in this room. Years ago, the Lord gave me a scripture. And I want you to turn to it right now to the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. And he gave me the first three verses of that, of, that, of that chapter. But I want you to read verse 1 with me. Because th- this, is, this is so very important. You look so lovely sitting there. Some of you look so handsome and, and all that sitting there. But, 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 but I want to say something to you. God knows the heart. God knows the inside. You know, he told, he told Samuel, Samuel, you look at the appearance. He says, but I look at the heart. All right? Now, now, let me say this to you. A big majority of the body of Christ, they all want revival. They want the fire. They want the Shekinah glory of God. But listen to me. A big majority of the body of Christ needs to be healed. They're not healed. And because they're not healed, they're hindering revival in their own lives. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. Because many of us here are walking around with wounds and hurts. We're, we're walking around with broken hearts, actually. And, and, and I want to share a few things with you tonight. But, but the Lord gave me a scripture. I want to go to a couple of scriptures that the Lord gave me this week. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to go into something, okay? But I want you to see this. Look what the, the, Lord, the Lord said this. The, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me and qualified me to preach the gospel of the good tidings to the meek, to the poor, and afflicted. He has, he has sent me to bind up and heal the brokenhearted. And you need to underline that. The, the broken heart doesn't just come from breaking up with a, in a relationship. Broken heartedness comes from many things in life, from many injuries, many letdowns. You, you know, you and I, you and I, through, through the years, through the years, you know, and this is why God says, I come down to deliver them out of their affliction and out of their trials. Because you, you need to understand that. that that the Lord has seen us since the time that you and I have accepted Jesus into our life. When we accepted Him into our life, He, he deposited into our hearts a fire, a divine fire that you and I had never ever experienced before. It came from Him. He, he, with, his, with His finger, with His very finger, He lit the fire in our hearts. It was Him. He, he touched our lives. He set us on fire. You and I, you and I were so on fire, man. We we couldn't stop talking about Jesus, man. We went everywhere talking about the Lord. We we wanted to see our family saved. We just couldn't get enough of the presence of God and all kinds of things. But through it, listen to me. I told you a while ago that the devil would do anything he can to hinder us or stop us from 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 continuing in that fire. Listen to me. 
He, he, he took us through so many afflictions, too many, so many trials. So many of us went through so many hardships in life. Amen. As we were serving the Lord, many, I've, I've talked to so many Christians that even lately have, have been saying, you know what, I've been mad at God. Their hearts were broken at God. People that go through one thing after another and, and, and imagine that they, they don't understand how come they're going through stuff. There, there are Christians, listen to me, there are Christians right now that, that, that actually have said, I for, I've forgiven, but then all of a sudden they see that person and that it rises back up and they say, I, I, I really haven't forgiven. You know, a broken heart comes from many things in life. I want to read a few things to you. I, I received a, a thing today, and it, and it was just a really a coincidence. Then I heard, I heard them singing a song, and, and, and usually the Lord will verify things to me through certain things. And, and I heard them singing the song, uh, uh, the fire, uh, well, the fire song anyway. <laughs> and I heard it in there, amen, and I knew that, 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 that I was on the right track. But, but I want to say this to you. Uh, I, I want to say this to you. Uh, you know, uh, Sid Ross sent me uh, some information, and then all of a sudden I started reading it, and it, and it started lining up with what I was going to bring tonight. But I, he wrote some stuff there. I want to bring it to you. I want to share it. Can I share it with you? Because I, I want you to understand something tonight, that, that unless you, you and me get rid of the junk, listen to me, you, you, you're going to hinder the fire. I, I, I don't care who hugs you and tells you, you're going to be okay, Gita. You know, no, listen, you got to get rid of it. You, you, you got to get rid of it. Listen to me. The, the power and the fire of God is present. It's, it's always been present. He, he, he's come down to heal, to deliver you, to set you free. Come on, are you with me? That's what he's doing. So, so look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I, I wrote a few things. And if you want to write them down, write them down. Uh, amen. I, I, I should have had them put it up there on the board for you, but I didn't. Oh, you got it. Okay, but I got it right here written, but I want... Look, look, look at this. It says, it says it like this. It says, the shattered heart. It, it, it means this. It means a violent, tearing, and fracturing of a heart. In other words, just like a bone, you know, just like a bone is broken. You know, when, when, when a bone is broken and they got to put it back together? That, that's the same way a heart is broken, you know. And, and sometimes, you know, you, you think you're getting over it, and all of a sudden something else comes and uh, injures that heart again. And then, and then something else. I went through that. I went through that. I'm telling you. I, I went through that. I went through that with my son. Where, man, I was so angry, so bitter, so unforgiving. And it was only the mercy of God that kept me going. Some of you are angry with your children. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, the Lord had to deal with me. And I'll never forget a preacher, a wise preacher told me this. He said, he said, Ray, whatever you do, don't sacrifice your son. He said, there's already been a son sacrificed for us all. Amen. Oh, give the Lord praise. And I thought, I thought, I thought that night, I thought that night I had got rid of it, man. But, but, but a short time later, here I was again with it. I was Carrying it again, and, and we had another battle going, and, and 
I went, I was driving home one night and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I says, what am I going to do with this kid besides kill him? And then I heard the Lord tell me, well, he's not the problem. I said, what do you mean he's not the problem? And you know, it takes humility. It takes humility. You got to humble yourself. I said, I said, what do you mean he's not the problem? He says, no. He says, I'm not saying he didn't do wrong. He says, but you're the problem, he says, because you're unforgiving and bitter. He says, it's hindering me from doing anything. I went home again, went on my face before the Lord and cried, cried before the Lord. Thought I had left it there, and I hadn't. And then one day, Pastor Red and I went to, we went to the first Expect Conference in Colorado Springs with David Wilkerson. And there was a preacher preaching there. We were sitting right in the middle of all these other preachers. And the preacher was preaching there all of a sudden. He looks out there and he says, you know, God told me to tell you that there's some of you pastors out here that are so angry at your children that... That because of some of them have backslidden and some of them have, uh, you had plans for your children and, and they, they disappointed you. And, and he went on and on, man. And man, it was just, boom, like sticking a dagger in my heart. But you know what? That day, right there, that day, the Lord set me free. Yeah, give the Lord praise. But there's many things, many things that, that, that break us, that, that hinder us. Look, look at this. I, I just want to read this to you because, because, listen, unless we get rid of the stuff, unless we stop trying to cover it, uh, we try to bury it and cover it or, or blame others, you, you know, listen to me. God has come down to deliver you. He wants to deposit a fresh fire inside of your life. You, you are the sanctuary. You're the temple. Listen, it was a foreshadow. He come down to that temple with His glory and His fire. But now, you, you have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now He deposits His fire and His glory into human vessels. And if there's going to be revival, listen to me. If there's going to be revival, listen to me. It's going to be because, listen to me, because, because God's people have decided they're going to get rid of the junk and they're going to repent from it and they're going to get, get rid of it and they're going to let the Holy Ghost, they're going to start following the cloud. They're going to go after the fire. Come on, is there anybody at home today? But pastor, you don't know what that husband does. You don't know what that wife does. You don't know. It doesn't matter. He's a healer. He gives you peace beyond your understanding. He'll give you peace beyond your understanding. I mean, powerful peace. So, so look what it says. It's a violent, violent tearing and, and fracturing of the heart. Look at this. It is, it is a violent act that shatters the heart to pieces. How many of you have ever been there where it looks like your heart is just falling apart? You lose your job and so many things go on, so many things happen and you don't know what you're going to do. And your, your heart gets all messed up. And, and a broken heart, listen to me, write this down, write this down. A broken heart produces anger, fear, anxiety, terror, hatred, and bitterness. It produces that. It, 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 brother, listen to me. You can carry it and carry it and carry it and you can keep deceiving yourself and telling you you're okay. Tell yourself you're okay, you're okay, you're okay. But not have the fire. Be, be nothing but smoke. And maybe even ashes. I'd rather have the fire. 
I said, I'd rather have the fire. I'd rather have a hunger. I'd rather have a hunger for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Or if you're going to give him praise, give him real praise. Come on, give the Lord real praise. Now look at this. These emotions, write this down. These emotions are what lead to panic attacks. Depression. And the need for prescription drugs. Brother, sister, let me tell you something. There are more people today in our country taking prescription drugs. It is the broken heart that generates these emotions. It is the broken heart that generates these emotions which are only symptoms because the real problem is the broken heart. Look, look what Ezekiel, Ezekiel 36, 26 says. Are you with me tonight? I said, are you with me tonight? I mean, the Lord wants to make you whole. He wants to make you complete so you can be a firehouse. So, so, the, so, so that you can be like that burning bush that's not consumed. Look, look, look what it says. Look, look what it says there in, 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 in Ezekiel. 36, 26, if they'll go up there with me. Ezekiel 36, 26. Amen. If not, I'll find it over here. Ezekiel 36. All right. They beat me by one page. Look what it says. A new heart. A new heart. Say a new heart. I will give you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. A new heart and a new spirit will I put within you. He'll take that old broken heart out. Throw it away. And give you a new heart, a brand new heart. What an awesome God! He's come down. Come on, he's come down to deliver you. And I will take away the stony heart. Because the broken heart always produces a hardness of heart. Out of, and he says, a stony heart out of your flesh. And give you a heart of flesh. A heart, a heart that can follow him. A heart that can sense Him and desire Him and hunger for Him. Are you with me, church? Is there anybody here tonight who can say, I want more of God. I want more of the fire of God. I want more of His presence. I want the Shekinah glory of God moving through my life. I don't want just to go to church and sit there with all the stuff I carry and then go up there, man, and shake a little bit and go home. I want to get rid of it. Come on, is there anybody hooked tonight? I want to get rid of it. I want to be real. Praise God. I'll give you a new heart, he says. I'll give you a brand new heart. A divorce brings broken hearts. And we, we sometimes don't get over it. And sometimes we get into another relationship 
And we still haven't gotten over the other one, man, and we're still hurting. And our hearts are broken. And then our children, listen to me, our children, uh, 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 listen to me, we, we come from a divorced home. We know what it's like. We, we needed our mother. We know what it's like. When, when, when people divorce, the children are left devastated. And they're left with broken hearts. Abuse. Abuse. How many Christian women are abused? And some men are abused by women. I'm, 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 I'm going to make a new, a new ministry here in the church called the BAM Club. <laughs> Battered, abused men. Uh. <laughs> uh, Jesus I need I need me a I need me a breath mint man I need me something here abuse both physical and mental Damage that heart. And, and, and listen, it's all the enemy trying to hinder you and keep you from becoming that firehouse. Abandonment. Rejection. You'd be surprised how many individuals are afraid of rejection. Did you go see her? Good. You'd be surprised how many people are afraid of rejection. Hatred. Christians, I'm talking about Christians now. I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about sinners. I'm talking about people who are supposed to be on fire for Jesus Christ and helping others out there find Jesus so they can be on fire. I'm talking about this is what they carry and they camouflage it. We camouflage it in church with, 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 with the way we act and talk and, and, and laugh and, 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 and all the things we do. But we're so full of stuff. I just can't stand that lady. <laughs> Sister, you ain't going to heaven. What's wrong with you? You're going to miss the rapture. Thank you, sister. Oh, man. You know what? I was thinking about this white one. I was really, I was, I was, I was hungry for, for a white one. Hallelujah. Can, can you imagine how many, how many individuals in church carry hatred? Well, I don't, I don't hate them so much. <laughs> I just don't like them. We try to, you know, ease it up a little bit, you know. It's heavy duty. And let me tell you something. The Lord wants to give us revival. I know that. I know He wants to give us... Man, He wants to flow through this place. How many believe He wants to flow through this place? How many know the Holy Ghost is here? And 
you know the you know the you know the crazy thing about it? Everybody's looking at me like, yes, Pastor, it's the next one sitting next to me. <laughs> war. War devastates people. I've I've got friends. Friends that are so devastated from war, from all the way back from the Vietnam War. Abortion. You'd be surprised how many young ladies that we have talked to that have been hurt, devastated from abortion. From tragedy. And you know the thing about tragedy is that most of the time people will say, why didn't God stop it? And we go on with that. And even death. I've seen people, they just can't get past it. I've seen women that have lost their husbands. Ten years later, they're still like he just died. And it's not that God's not there. They just won't let it go. How many here want the fire? How, how many of you want the fire of God? Yeah. Look at this. Go over to John 3.11. John 3.11. Whoever disappointed you, whoever let you down... Whoever offended you, forget it. Come and get healed. Let the Lord heal the brokenness so that you can be a firehouse. Are, are you with me, church? So that you can be a vessel in the hands of God. Look what he says here. I assure you more solemnly, I tell you, we speak only of what we know, John 3, 11. Only of what we know, we know absolutely what we are talking about. We have actually seen what we are testifying to. We were eyewitnesses of it, and still you do not receive our testimony. You reject or refuse our evidence that of, of myself and of all those who are born of the Spirit. Look at Hebrews 1 7. Say Hebrews 1 7. Referring to angels, he says, God who makes his angels wins. They fly. You know that many individuals have seen angels in this building right here. But look what he says here. And his ministering servants. Look at your neighbor and say, you're supposed to be a ministering servant. And what does he want to make you? What does he want to make you? Say it. Everybody say it. Say it again. Say it again. Flames of fire. Burning bushes. That aren't consumed. But that keep burning. Look at this. And his ministry servants, flames of fire. What an awesome God. I said, I said, what an awesome God. I thought I thought Denise was on fire, man, when I saw her red hair. I said, what's that? I'm, I'm just kidding you. 
Don't go get broken hearted now. God is good. How many want that, that fire? Go with me to Acts 2 and we're going we're gonna to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Acts chapter 2. I'm going to have the musicians come. Verse 1, 2, and 3. And we're going to come and pray. And listen, we're going to get rid of the load. And we're going to get on fire. How many want that tonight? Amen. Look at this. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all assembled together in one place. Verse 2. When suddenly there came a sound from heaven, like the rushing of a violent tempest blast, and it filled the whole house in which they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues resembling fire.